Over 100 million Americans are experiencing some of the worst air quality ever recorded as smoke from wildfires in America's top hat makes its way south. The scenes from New York City are downright eerie. A Broadway performer walked off stage during a matinee yesterday because she couldn't breathe. It is genuinely scary for people. And you know what that means? It means it's the perfect opportunity for liberals to push their fear-mongering climate change agenda. The smoke had just barely appeared in the sky when Randy Weingarten, the nation's teacher union boss and Democrat party operative, but I repeat myself, she blamed the smoke on, you guessed it, climate change. Weingarten tweeted, climate change is real. Please be careful today in NYC. But Weingarten, a well-known private jet enthusiast, neglected to mention how the wildfires in Canada are connected to global warming or global cooling or climate change or whatever. And the reason for that omission, one suspects, is that there is no discernible connection at all. The wildfires in Canada have burned 9 million acres of land. Pretty bad. But is it historically bad? No. Nine million acres is a lot, but nine million acres is nothing compared to the 49 million acres that burned 20 years ago during the Russian wildfires of 2003. Still, 2003, relatively recent. Maybe that was climate change too. Well, what about the 1987 Black Dragon Fire, also in China, which burned 18 million acres, twice the Canadian burn that turned New York City orange? Were the 1987 Chinese fires caused by climate change? Maybe, I guess. The Libs have been shrieking about some sort of environmental catastrophe since the 70s. How about the Siberian wildfires of 1915, which burned a whopping 35 million acres of land in Russia? Was climate change already in full swing by 1915? Industrialization started in Russia in the late 19th century. So, maybe? Would have had to act awful quick to blame industry for that one. How about the Black Thursday bushfires of 1851 in Australia, which burned 12 million acres, 33% more land than the amount that has sent this historic plume to America from Canada? How about the half million acres that burned every single year in Oregon and Washington state alone since time immemorial, prehistory, before a European ever set foot on that land. Were those climate change too? Even a cursory glance at history shows that lots of North America, just like the rest of the world, has been regularly set ablaze long before any of the supposed causes of climate change ever had any effect or even existed. But a photograph and some liberal demagogues with an agenda say that wildfires are caused by your pickup truck and your air conditioning. They're choosing to exploit a natural crisis for their political purposes. They're confident enough that you were never taught any of that history. They're confident because they control the education system and the media and the big tech platforms on which you're seeing all those scary pictures. Right now, go to expressvpn.com slash Knowles. Did you notice that big tech companies today are masquerading as privacy companies? Just fix your privacy settings, turn off app tracking, and you're all good. Yeah, right. Are we supposed to believe that the big tech wolf has now turned into our sweet little grandma? I don't think so. Big tech feeds on your information by collecting and selling off your data. They can't stop themselves from looking at what you do online. So to protect myself, against big tech's prying eyes, I have chosen to use ExpressVPN. When you use the ExpressVPN app on your computer or phone, you are hiding your unique IP address. Websites can't use that address to find out your real location or track what you do online. On top of that, ExpressVPN encrypts and reroutes 100% of your online activity, so your internet provider, Wi-Fi admin, and hackers can't see it. The best part, though, is how easy it is to use. I'm a Luddite, not the biggest tech guy. You just click one button. It'll protect all your devices. Boom, click it on your phone, on your laptop, you're good to go. One ExpressVPN subscription covers up to five devices at the same time, so you can protect your whole family, too. Use the VPN that I trust. Go to expressvpn.com slash Knowles. Get three extra months for free. E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash Knowles. expressvpn.com slash Knowles to learn more. 
Right now, go to cinch.com, use code Knowles. Picture the perfect summer night, the warm breeze on your face as you lounge in your favorite chair outside, the grill sizzling with juicy, delicious burgers. The aroma of the food is irresistible. Now, imagine what this perfect summer night would look like if you went to turn on the grill and your propane tank were empty. Well, that's where our friends at Cinch come in. Cinch is a propane grill tank home delivery service. They deliver propane grill tanks right to your door. Cinch delivers on your schedule, requires no long-term commitment or subscription, plus delivery is completely contactless. You don't have to wait around at home. Track the order on the Cinch app from anywhere. Whether you're grilling steaks or lighting up the patio heaters on a cold night, Cinch's propane delivery service ensures that you have the fuel you need to make the most of every moment. Go to cinch.com or download the Cinch app to order. New customers can get their first tank exchange for just 10 bucks with promo code Knowles. Cinch.com or download the Cinch app. Use promo code Knowles to get your first tank exchange for just 10 bucks. It's a limited time offer. You must live within a Cinch service area to redeem it. Cinch.com slash offer for details. The worst air quality ever recorded in New York City if you look at the pictures, it's, it's bright orange there. It's weird. It's crazy and hazy. The wildest reaction to this came from some yuppies yesterday at Equinox. The Equinox is a fancy gym for rich urbanites. And, and the picture was taken and published, I think, by the New York Times, but it was taken of this rooftop of some building in New York where amid all the haze, the dangerous air quality, there are a bunch of of wealthy young New Yorkers standing, doing some kind of yoga salutation, standing up arms in the air, like a religious worship ceremony, which is exactly what yoga is. If you were an anthropologist, you were an historian, and you came across this picture 500 years into the future, you would say, oh, this is an example of religion in 2023 New York. This is an example of the kind of public worship that that existed in liberal America in 2023. And a modern person right now would say, no, that's not true. They're just doing yoga. You don't understand, man. But the thing is, the historian would be right. This is an example of religious practice. All these little millennial yogis who, instead of going to church, they go to yoga and they go to brunch. That is a religious practice. They're, They're risking something about their physical health here which is the air quality, they're risking that because of something more important, which is what? It's the religion of self-actualization. It's the religion of of being at one with the universe, man. It's the religion of looking around and seeing the big, vast, beautiful view from the very, very top of the tower. It's the religion of self, the religion of do whatever you want, the religion of take a moment and relax from your busy work schedule. It's a religious practice. Yoga is an actual Eastern religious practice. That's why there's so much spirituality associated with it. And a lot of Westerners pretend they can divorce those things, but you can't. Whatever you do a lot, whatever you do habitually is going to have some tie in to religion. And in the case of yoga, it just happens to be much more directly spiritual. Previously, during a natural disaster or some kind of crisis, you'd go in, you'd pray. That's what Christians would do. You'd, you'd, I don't know, maybe you go to church or something. But that is, that is the church in New York. And they're not going to shut down y- yoga church. During a natural crisis, the government might shut down your actual church. They might shut down a synagogue. They might shut down maybe a mosque. I don't know if they would actually shut down a mosque. But they're not going to shut down liberal church. Liberal church being <laughs> the yoga studio and the brunch spot and the pot dispensary. They're never going to shut those down. Boy, what a great clip that was. Make sure you ring that bell, subscribe to the Michael Knowles YouTube channel. We'll see you next time.